so let's solve a problem which I've paid in JMA in 2025. So first of all, this question is a long question to read and interpret. So looks like an advanced level question just by the sheer use of the symbols and then the um, longness of this question, right? Such a long question. Any which way. So let's read this. So there's an ellipse given, which is given by E1. This is the first ellipse. And then other ellipses are again constructed within these ellipses such that the length of the major axis of the next one, as in like what is happening is the length of the minor axis of the last one is equal to the length of the major axis of the next one, meaning that the next one's major axis is equal to the, uh, what you call the minor axis of the previous one. So the ellipses will become smaller and smaller and smaller. So how this is constructed, let's just do this, just for visualization purpose. So let's get some shapes and then try doing this. Oh, will some take some circles and then try to convert it into ellipse. Mm, okay, so let's start with this one, the first one. So let's let's make it a big one and then we are making an ellipse. So, and then, so this is your kind of first ellipse which is there. Now what is happening here is, okay, let's take a copy of it also so that we can create a few. So let's create few one by one. So what is happening? The first one which is there, right, like this and then like this. Now, whatever be the major axis, call this as origin. This will be a um, minus a comma zero and then a comma zero. This would be, let's say, um, zero comma b and this will be zero comma minus b. Right? Call it b1, a1. So this is the first one, a1, and this is b1. Now, the next one which is going to get inside this will be such a way that this is how it will be. The center is same. Let's make it a little bit bigger as well. But what is going to happen is that this one is going to have the same center. But now this major axis, which is there, will be equal to this minor axis. So even though I'm calling it right now, let's say a2, comma 0, the idea is, and this is, let's say, 0, comma b2, and this is 0, comma a2 comma minus a2 comma 0 and this is 0 comma minus b2. But what is happening here is this a2 is actually equal to b1 is what is given to us. And in the similar manner, if I have another one, which is this a little smaller than this, right? So this is how it will be created. And again, here, if I'm just trying to talk about this one, this is going to be a3 comma 0. And then this point could be your 0 comma b3 and what will happen is this a3 is going to be equal to b2 that is what is the relation which is given this is first one and the second one which is give what is given is that their eccentricities are same so that is another information given so basically what is the idea is that e1 is actually equal to e2 is actually equal to e3 and so and so forth okay so this is what it is and then finally we have to find out the sum of all these areas and this you know, this i is tending to infinity so one to infinity so smaller and smaller 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 it will become and all these areas we got to figure out okay so first let's make use of this what is this e1 e1 is gonna be we call it a c by a right or like if i try to put it in terms of let's say e1 square um let's call it c1 and a1 so this is gonna be equal to c1 square upon a1 square I mean, you guys know that this, you could write it also as a1 square minus b1 square, right? a1 square minus b1 square upon a1 square. And then this could be written as 1 minus b1 square upon a1 square, right? I mean, some some of you already remember this as a1 square, a e square as 1 minus b1 square upon a1 square. Similarly, e2 square will be similarly, it will be 1 minus b2 square upon e2 square and so on and so forth. And I can say that e3 square will also be same, like 1 minus b3 square upon e3 square, right? If I sort of compare this, because e1 is actually equal to e2 equals to e3, so e1 square will also be equal to e2 square equals to e3 square and so on and so forth. It will just keep on going. In this manner, if I just write this, this will be 1 minus b1 square upon e1 square. And this will be 1 minus b2 square upon e2 square. 
and then this will be 1 minus b3 square upon b3 square and so on and so forth. So here what you can compare is this b1 by a1 square now will be equal to, in a sense, equal to b2 square by a2 square. And then this will be equal to b3 square upon a3 square. So with few of these, we'll try to sort of figure out the relationship, right? So let's try talking about these two. What will happen? So this is b1 square upon a1 square. And then this is going to be b2 square upon a2 square. So we'll try to get everything in terms of a1, b1 itself. And that is what is our idea. So first of all, what is given to us is b1 square upon a1 square, b2 square upon a2 square. Now, what is my b2? I don't know yet, right? But what is my a2 that I know for sure? This is actually equal to b1 itself, right? So that is what we said here, right? a2 is, a2 is actually equal to b1. So let's substitute this. So a2 is equal to b1. So this is going to be b1 raised to the power 4 upon a1 square, right? So this is going to be equal to b2 square, right? Now I can say that what is my b2 going to be? This is going to be equal to b1 square upon a1. This is what is going to be my b2, okay? Now, why did I find this? Because what I want to find is the area of each of these ellipses. So area A1 is going to be equal to what? Pi into A1 B1, right? A2 is going to be equal to pi into A2 B2. Now, I know that A2 is nothing but A2 is nothing but B1 itself, so B1. And this is going to be B1 square upon A1. Now, I've got everything in terms of B1 A1 itself, right? So this has become pi into B1 cube upon A1. Okay, so this is what it is. Now this is the A2 I've got. If I get A3, then I sort of get a relationship going and then we will try to work it out. So what is my uh, A3 before that? Let's figure out, like in the same manner, the way I've got B2 equals to B1 square upon A1 square. If I try to solve this, what I get is my B3 is going to be equal to B2 square upon A2. This is what it will be, right? So uh, in the same manner as I like, if I just try to make use of this relation. Now, what is my B2 square? Let's put it in terms of B1 itself. So this will be B1 raised to the power four upon A1 square. Now, what is my A2? A2 is gonna be equal to now B1 itself, right? So now A2 is gonna be equal to B1. So this is B1. So now this will become B1 cube upon a1 square. So with this, let's try figuring out what is my A3. My A3 is going to be equal to pi into A3 B3. Now, uh, what is my, let's keep doing. So pi A3, what is A3? A3 is nothing but B2 itself because the previous ones, uh, the major axis will be equal to the minor axis of the previous one. And B3 is just now we have found out is B1 cube upon a1 square. Now what is b2? b2 in terms of this is b1 square upon a1. So let's put this as well. So this is b1 square upon a1 into b1 cube upon b1 square. Right? So finally what I've got is pi into b1 to the power 5. Okay? Upon a1 cube. So now we've got a relationship going and then we will write this. So my summation of ai's is going to be equal to a1 plus A2, I is varying from 1 to infinity. So the first one is going to be pi into A1 V1. The second one is pi into B1 cube upon A1. And then the third one is going to be equal to pi into B1 raised to the power 5 upon A1 cube. And this is going up to infinity. Now if you see this, this has become an AP. And what is this AP? This AP is actually having this first term as this and then the common ratio r is actually equal to b1 square okay b1 square upon this is going to be b1 b1 square upon a1 square right so this is what is my r is going to be now what is my b1 if i look at b1 square so b1 was b1 square was 4 and this is 9 right so this is 4 9 4 by 9 now, this is actually less than 1. So, this is an infinite GPE whose common ratio is less than 1. So, I can actually make use of the formula of the 
infinite gp so what is this gonna be this is gonna be equal to a so the final formula is gonna be a upon 1 minus r this is what is the formula so a is pi a1 b1 right and upon 1 minus 4 by 9 this is what is my common ratio it's turned out to be i just put the values now this will become pi into a1 is basically 3 b1 is 2 and this will be 9 9 minus 4 will be 5 so this will be pi into 6 upon 5 into 9 right so this is the part but actually uh what we have here is this 5 by pi into something something right so this is what it is so if i multiply it by 5 by pi into the number i've got is pi by 5 into 54 this is what is the values of ai now if i do this then this and this cancels and what i'm left with is 54 and that is what is my answer so 54 is my answer you can substitute or put this this was a numerical question so you can put the values for 54 so that is what is your answer okay so see this is one of those clues that then like if i get pi by 5 I mean, this was one of my clues that maybe I was on the right track and whatever I did is correct, okay? But this is still a long problem to solve. And as you can see, if you don't get this relationship going, then you will get somewhere tied up and then you won't be able to figure out further, okay? So, yeah. So, this question as well had to be chosen wisely. If you had some time to do other question, you should have attempted those questions before attempting this, all right? Yeah. So, that's all for this question. Uh, if you've got any queries, do ask me in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer your queries. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good day.